Hey, yo! We want to introduce you to the most amazing destinations in the world. Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. It's young. Sunny. Colorful. Diverse. It's balagan, messy, and above all... It's incredibly tasty. Hello everyone once again from the hellscape that is planet earth these days and just how terrible everything is I know I found it really hard just to watch everything by the time this video goes up I would have gone to a pro-Palestine protest in London so hopefully seeing everyone come out will make me feel better but this is the topic I've spoke about in the past and I think it's increasingly more relevant so how many of you especially on Instagram saw all your favorite liberal celebrities start supporting Israel very blatantly like people who have supported Black Lives Matter people who have supported LGBT rights people who hate Republicans people who stand up for the marginalized so it seems but when this all kicked off nearly two weeks ago now they all supported Israel and you're thinking to yourself like why why do they do this and two among them Zionist Jews Sarah Silverman and Amy Schumer seem to have gone like completely just mask off supporting war crimes like they actually are supporting war crimes on their Instagram and it's probably like bizarre to some people how much woke liberals will support terrible stuff just because Israel will do it now you know a lot of us leftists like to joke that you know scratch a liberal and a fash bleeds and that is true a lot of the time but i also think that can be simplifying an issue which is something that israel often preys on for its own propaganda because if you guys have been seeing the israel social media accounts they don't tweet like your average account representing a country they tweet like some gen z intern runs their account and it's very deliberate they are trying to pander to like modern woke liberal sensibilities and they've been doing that for a long time. So what I want to talk about is, of course, them targeting like Greta Thunberg, them targeting like Taylor Swift, people like this to try and get their uh, message out about how great settler colonialism is. But I also just want to talk about the general woke washing of apartheid by Israel, which is historic, which is how so many American woke liberals get on board with just this terrible stuff. And like I said, we can simplify it and say that, yes, liberalism as a politics, especially American liberalism, is inherently racist, Western chauvinist, all that stuff. But what is it about Israel that makes it more palatable to the woke sensibilities of the liberal elite in America, let's say? So all of that coming up for you today. Check me out on social media. Check out my Patreon and let's get into this. So like I said, there's been a lot of support from woke Zionists, be them Jews or Christians in America or atheists, and they hide behind this language of sticking up for the marginalized because it's become trendy in American liberal elite circles to uh, tweet stuff about Black Lives Matter, tweet stuff about trans rights, but obviously these people were always fanatical Biden supporters and would shame anyone who said they didn't want to vote for Biden or just Biden is terrible. Not surprising, they will pretend some guy who was the architect of the crime bill, which tripled the US prison population, which of course targets minority groups, was somehow some sort of anti-racist presidential candidate. And not surprising, Biden has completely gone along with what Israel had been doing recently so i tweeted this out about a day ago u.s progressives on literally any issue that isn't healthcare, and of course i was simplifying it in a way i said you know people do at the start of the video but then some of the evidence i had so um this twitter account saying free palestine we tried that palestine doesn't want to be free they just want israelis gone there's a difference and we understand what you mean when you say it question why doesn't any other arab country allow palestinian refugees in their country that's what I thought. Um, but if you go on this person's Twitter account, Blue Crew, BLM, LGQBTI plus ally, equality for all, never stop fighting. So equality for all, 
except Palestinians, I guess. And supporting the LGBT community, but not the Palestinian LGBT community. They just deserve to live in terrible conditions and face like the most brutal occupation in probably colonial history. But that is the modern American liberal mind for you. Now, to get into like the propaganda from Israel and how these people are convinced that Israel is a beacon of progressivism, a beacon of equality, all that stuff, right? We have to look at two different things. And that's mainly Israel's propaganda centering around its LGBT rights and Israel's propaganda around Israeli women. Now, let's start with the LGBT stuff. So a lot of people, and Owen Jones was showing people saying this to him, saying, why do you take the side of the people who hate gay people or hate the LGBT people? And I've had people in my own comments saying, I'm trans, so I'm going to support Israel. Like, it's really that binary, right? But also, Israel might be better than some of its neighbours on LGBT rights. It's still not, like, an amazing place compared to other parts of the world. And you still have a very religious group dominating politics, including the current government's support. So, yeah, it's a bit naive to frame it like this. And, of course, new atheist types like to do this as well. You know, Israel's a beacon of gay rights and stuff and George Santos actually tweeted about this today making it very relevant but as Owen Jones said there's plenty of gay people who live in Palestine too so what you're helping them you're helping them by supporting this occupation and also in a video I made about this specifically um, there was a Palestinian lesbian who actually went to live in Israel because she bought into the propaganda but she said her experience was pretty demoralizing because they accepted her as a lesbian but they kept trying to make her change her Palestinian name because they didn't accept her as a Palestinian woman, which I thought was a very interesting story. So go check out that video about why new atheists love Israel. But you might have been seeing these adverts like two years ago. They were everywhere, like literally everywhere. They have millions and millions of views. And it's like basically Israeli tourism promoting its LGBT scene to Westerners to woke wash their apartheid and also to get more tourists to Israel itself. So have a look at this. Hey, yo! We want to introduce you to the most amazing destinations in the world. Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. It's young. Sunny. Colorful. Diverse. It's Balagan, messy, and above all... It's incredibly tasty. Tel Aviv beaches are the best. Tel Aviv and Jerusalem have the most amazing nightlife. Jerusalem, the heart of the world, where all people come together. A spiritual adventure with 3,000 years of amazing history. See you here soon. We love you. So there you see in the advert, notably, yes, lots of white people. Looks very European. Looks like any other Mediterranean place. This could be Greece. This could be Spain. And I think in a more sinister way reflects Israeli society's own racism. Because you're not seeing too many uh, Palestinian Jews in these videos uh, at these LGBT events and stuff. But yeah, why it does that is because it's trying to convince people that Israel is modern, progressive, and if you support liberal woke values, then of course you support Israel. How could you support the Palestinians, those backwards Muslims? They don't accept the LGBT community. Where is Gazan pride? Where is it? Don't see it anywhere. Therefore, you know, we should colonize the region further to free the LGBT community in Gaza. Like, anyone with half a brain can see how ridiculous it is and can see, if you're a leftist, my solidarity doesn't just extend to people who are exactly the same as me. And here's another note as well. How do you think people are gonna progress on LGBT rights? If they have bad educations, if they have not great access to like things like the internet and stuff, and they're occupied by a foreign power, how is a country meant to develop to the point where there's more tolerant progressive values if people can't even get an education and where maybe more fundamentalist religion can thrive? Although I think it's more complex in Palestine than the Israelis that to make out that everyone is some sort of fundamentalist because 
Palestinians in a lot of their history have been more secular than other Arab groups as well. And of course, if you look at the actual dynamics around why Hamas got into power in the first place, it wasn't just because they were fundamentalists. It's because Palestinians were sick of secular Palestinian organizations selling them out to Israel and they wanted to change. But yeah, you can't fall for this propaganda because you know it makes no sense fundamentally because even if it is true, which it is, that Israel is better on these things, why does that matter? Does that mean we should support their apartheid and colonialism because they're a bit better on these things? If Afrikaans in apartheid South Africa were better on gay rights than um, the black majority, would that mean you'd support their rule as well? No, it's insane. So let's not pretend this logic makes any sense. Either you're naive and an idiot and you've fallen for the propaganda, which people like Sarah Silverman, I assume, probably have, or like George Santos, you're just using it to cover your support for Israel and their brutal actions and hide behind this woke washing of their crimes. Now, on that note about crimes, the Israeli military is one, and I've been very critical on Twitter recently because, because the Israeli military is part conscript, and most Jewish Israelis who aren't from an orthodox background have to serve in the military. And the movement to not serve in the military is actually pretty small. I think nearly 10% of the Israeli population are in the active armed forces or in the reserves, and they've bragged how they could probably mobilize like between a third and a half of the country's population if they needed to, because of how much of the population actually have military training. And a lot of people I've argued with about, you know, oh no, you know, Israelis in the IDF are victims too, have told me that, oh yeah, but lots of them do desk jobs. But if you're a conscript doing a desk job, that frees up room for the people who aren't conscripts to go into Palestinian territories and brutalize them, right? So you're still absolutely complicit in this war machine. Can't convince yourself otherwise that, oh no, I was one of the good ones. I sat at my desk in Tel Aviv and I never even went into a Palestinian neighborhood. I don't care. I don't have sympathy. Israel is meant to be this free country, access to information. You have a democracy, you can vote for who you want yet you still serve in this apartheid military. I don't think many people would have the same sympathy for people in apartheid South Africa or Rhodesia, so don't expect me to extend it to you because you pretend that everyone has to do it and I sit behind a desk. I really don't care. But anyway, also, unlike a lot of um, just countries around the world, women have to serve in the IDF as well. Now, a much smaller percentage of them actually serve in active combat roles, but there are women who do serve in combat roles in the IDF, which makes it quite unique for westernized militaries. But also, it's a point of propaganda for the Israeli military. Like, look how tolerant we are. Look how progressive we are. Israelis are all equal. We all serve in the military together. Doesn't matter your gender, you will go and serve the Israeli state. And you remember, like, about two years ago, there was those viral TikToks going around of IDF cat girls and just IDF women doing propaganda videos. Now, these weren't actually from official IDF channels. The IDF basically approved of all of them because it could have easily told them to stop if it wasn't okay, but they saw a lot of these women were getting a lot of support on TikTok for wearing the Israeli 
military uniform and doing stupid TikTok dances. But historically, Israel has used women as part of their propaganda, especially women serving the military. They've had whole like advertising campaigns about this. So what you have there is like two things. You have, we are so woke, we have women serving in the military and isn't that wonderful? And we are so woke that Israel has better LGBT rights than a lot of the Middle Eastern countries surrounding it. But also, let's not pretend it's amazing or anything like that. It still has a very strong anti-LGBT element, which have the government's ear. It still hasn't legalised a lot of legalised things to LGBT people in other countries, like even the United States and Western European countries. So even on that front, it lies a lot about how woke it is. But it doesn't matter. That is the image it shows itself to the world. You know, we are Israel, we are progressive, we are modern, we are tolerant, we are the West. And if you support good, decent Western morals, you will support us in our fight against backwards Muslim Arabs who live in Gaza or live in the West Bank because they are uncivilized and they can't live in peace. They attack us. So we're just, you know, defending ourselves, the right to defend ourselves, defend our woke democracy. Don't you Westerners love that, right? And also it helps that a lot of Israelis are actually Westerners themselves in the first place. And obviously the founding of Israel was founded by hundreds of thousands of Europeans after the Second World War. So there's always been that element of relatability to Israel. But I do also find it funny in a lot of their propaganda, you don't see many Ethiopian Jews or Palestinian Jews. You mostly see white Jews. And I think, like I said, that could be a whole nother video. There is this racist hierarchy in Israel itself where, yes, Ethiopian Jews are treated terribly by other groups of Jews. But anyway, let's move on a little bit now because I framed this whole thing for you, why they present themselves as woke, why they prey on liberal sensibilities of the West. Now, I just want to get into their really bizarre social media account on Twitter and just the people they target is really strange. So um, Greta Thunberg posted a picture of her um, with Stand with Gaza, with a Jewish friend saying, this Jew stands with Palestine, free Palestine. And she had this little octopus toy in the picture. You know, most people who aren't fucking insane have no problem with a little octopus toy. And on the website of the toy, it says, our adorable emotions octopus is a firm favorite for children and adults. The cuddly emotion octopus can be turned from happy to sad in a matter of seconds, featuring two colors. These are a brilliant sensory product for anyone that has difficulty expressing emotions. Let the octopus tell the people around you exactly how you feel. The product is extremely popular in a home environment and educational development purposes. Absolutely fine, but of course, People who see anti-Semitism everywhere actually said she was secretly putting in an anti-Semitic, like, trope about Jews controlling the world with octopi who were used in propaganda back in the day. You have an account here, which supports Azov in Ukraine, by the way, basically saying that that's what Greta Thunberg was doing, putting anti-Semitism in her statement. Sadly, she actually took another photo about the octopus saying it's come to my knowledge that the stuffed animal shown in my earlier post can be interpreted as a symbol for anti-Semitism, which I was completely unaware of. The toy in the picture is a tool often used by autistic people as a way to communicate feelings. We are, of course, against any type of discrimination and condemn anti-Semitism in all forms and shapes. You know, I wish she didn't do that, but, you know, she's clarifying her point. But that's what I mean. They're weaponizing woke sentiment. Like, Greta, you've put an anti-Semitic symbol by putting your toy octopus in the picture with you. Again, don't apologize to these people. That's what they've done in the UK by weaponizing anti-Semitism charges against everyone. They whipped up this hysteria that anyone who criticizes Israel is actually racist against Jews, right? And it worked in the election, but now what you have is like the leader of the Labour Party saying that Israel has a right to do whatever it wants, including shutting off all water in Gaza, right? Because he's absolutely terrified of being called a racist because that's what these woke liberals have done to themselves, right? They are so scared of being called these things, partly because of their own thought of conflating anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism, that that's actually the worst thing that can happen. But then you have the Israeli Twitter account jumping in saying, Hamas don't use sustainable materials for their rockets, the victims of theirs could be your friends speak up. So like, why are they targeting her? They're targeting her because it's a young figure who's influential and they're trying to get in there, but it's desperate. 
The Israeli Twitter account has nothing better to do than target Greta Thunberg for posting her solidarity with Palestine. And of course, if you go on their page, you see them retweeting people about, you know, why would the LGBT community ever stand with Palestine? Like I said, this is just a propaganda tactic they use. Again, they were targeting Taylor Swift, trying to like get the Swifties on side. So they write, Taylor Swift's era's bodyguard returned home to fight for his country. Hey, Taylor Swift. We promise you'll never find another like him. We love you, Aaron. But then community notes coming with a W. This bodyguard was hired by the stadium and was not part of Taylor's own team. Further, Aaron is the name of the journalist who reported that the bodyguard returned to Israel and is not the bodyguard. So yeah, trying to capitalize on Gen Z love for Taylor Swift, failing miserably with their propaganda that can be debunked in two seconds. But you wonder why they didn't check this. They don't care. Because as you've seen with the social media war around this stuff, it's all about pushing disinformation really quick because everyone eats it up and then no one checks it later, right? So you already have the image in your head. So people have just read that and think, oh, Taylor Swift hires IDF soldiers for a bodyguard. Taylor Swift does something, it must be good. And then you have other stuff about basically saying the BBC is working for the Palestinians, which is absolutely laughable. You have super cringe stuff like this, the Iranian embassy writes time is up. And then the Embassy of Israel to the USA posts a GIF of Neo and they retweet it. Retweeting, of course, the number one simps for Israel, India. Obviously going crazy about Gigi Hadid, who is Palestinian. So Pop Bay saying, the official government account of the state of Israel calls out Gigi Hadid for sharing posts about condemning the Israeli government. They say, how have you been sleeping the past week? Are you turning a blind eye to Jewish babies? Your silence has been very clear about where you stand we see you. So yeah, the state of Israel, just going after a, a random model. Nothing better to do, government account, when your country's at war, just target Taylor Swift, Gigi Hadid, Greta Thunberg, talk about how woke Israel is. Again, you can see the propaganda here. It's cringe inducing. And I think as we've seen with recent polling, it's not working with Gen Z who are overwhelmingly pro-Palestine in Western countries, right? But they're trying their hardest because what they've got with the millennials in America, the liberal millennials who aren't leftists at all, is they have these people who are all about aesthetics. Sarah Silverman, Amy Schumer. Oh my God, we will fight for trans people. Black Lives Matter. Oh my God, so good. But when it comes to, you know, apartheid, settler colonialism, like wiping out a whole group of people, they love it. Lovely woke Israel can do nothing wrong and we must support them because... They are good. Palestinians bad because these people fundamentally, like most liberals, are massive Western chauvinist racists. So this propaganda works on them because they've already got that in their mind, that conditioning, that racism they have, which they don't think they have. Then this conflict comes along and they act like this. Same with, you know, political commentators. David Pakman has been terrible on Israel throughout his whole YouTube career and is still terrible. They hide behind this stuff all the time. David Pakman even has videos where he's calling out Black Lives Matter for having solidarity with Palestine, right? This is your brain on liberalism, right? You are just a massive racist and you can see how Israeli propaganda has always targeted these groups. So if you're wondering why all your favorite woke liberal celebs can seemingly not have a good take on this issue, there's multiple layers to it. Like I said, liberalism is racist. American liberals are crazy racist. But also this propaganda from Israel, they've been growing up with their whole lives, that Israel is progressive, Israel is great. And of course, they grow up in the war and terror era, like myself, but they're even older. They absorb all that racism, and then they come away thinking that every single Muslim is just an insanely backwards person who is violent and stuff, and given the opportunity, would be violent against every marginalized community, right? They all think that. That's why they post insane stuff on Twitter, and one thing I'm going to say is, let's just not forget these people. Let's not forget what they stood for and let's not give them a pass. Like, even if they apologize, they don't get a pass. What they have done over the last two weeks is unforgivable. What they've supported is unforgivable with their platforms. No one should forgive these people. No one should forget. And I hope we remember in the future, when we're thinking about this time period, we remember them like people who supported Jim Crow. We remember them like people who supported apartheid in South Africa and Rhodesia. We think of them as these fascist racists because fundamentally, although they convince themselves they are, they are woke liberals for equality, like that bio said of that Twitter user at the start, they're not. 
and that's because of multiple reasons, but it includes them buying Israeli propaganda. But anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.